Hello everyone, this is going to be a how-to on replacing a booster pump for a pool. Um, this one is a Pentair model number 360526. It's a 115 230 volt unit and it's 0.8 horsepower. Uh, picture on here in the box, so this is what this one looks like. Um, to start, you need to make sure that your power is off. So you're going to want to make your way over to your breaker box, find the one that says pool pump, and go ahead and shut it off. Next, you're going to make your way over to your old pool pump, and go ahead and take off the cover that hides all the electrical components. There, and uh, once you get the cover off, you're going to want to find a way to make sure that the wires are no longer hot to verify that that breaker did shut off uh, the supply of electricity to your unit. So what I have here is a voltage pin. It'll start blinking or beeping at you if it detects voltage. It did not, but I wanted to double check, so I got my multimeter out and I'm going to put it on the screws to make sure that they're not receiving any electricity. You can see right there it shows on the meter zero volts on the hots. And this way I know I'm good to go ahead and take off those wires. There. And then uh, the next step is we need to disconnect this elbow from the unit. So I'm going to go ahead and start unscrewing this piece that connects the flexible conduit to a 90. Once you get it unscrewed, it should just pull off like that. And then we'll go ahead and pull the wires through the 90 and then we'll just set it off to the side. Uh, for me, I'm gonna go ahead and reuse this 90. Uh, nothing wrong with it, didn't see a need to buy a new one. So you just need to take off the nut on the inside and then it should just come right out. Once you get that 90 off, we need to start disconnecting the actual uh, water hoses from the old pump. For me, I just had to take off these black connectors on top. That's what held the hoses to the old pump. They unscrew pretty easy and then they just pull off. Then once you have those disconnected, you're free to go ahead and remove your pump unless you have it anchored. And if that's the case, you'll just have to unscrew the anchors that are holding in your old pump. And this next part is going to depend on how clean your pad is or if it's indoors. I have an outdoor unit, so I had a bunch of buildup of dirt. I wanted to go ahead and remove that, so I grabbed a shovel and a brush just so I could lay it down on that nice flat surface. Okay, once I got it all brushed off, I grabbed that 90 and started fishing the wires through it. This is going to be a lot easier than putting the 90 on to the new pump and then trying to get the wires to finagle through there.
There, once you get the wires through the 90, you're going to push that 90 into the electrical housing of the new booster pump. Uh, and then you're going to grab the nut that holds that 90 in place and just tighten it on there. And then once I got the wires in there, I started to put them in place. Uh, I got the ground on, but then I decided to hold off. And then I'll put a video of me recording those later. Uh, this is the old pump. I'm taking off the adapters. I'm just going to reuse them. It did come with new ones, uh, but these at least look to me in pretty good condition. Didn't save point. And using the new ones, I'll just save those for later. All right, the next part of this is you're going to wrap the threads of the adapter with sealant tape. You can get this anywhere, Walmart, Lowe's, Home Depot, um, pretty cheap. Just make sure that water doesn't come leaking out of where those adapters thread into the pump. There. Once you get it hand tight, you're going to set and grab a set of adjustable pliers or a crescent wrench to tighten it the rest of the way. Once I got those tightened down all the way, I just grabbed the old hose and pressed it back onto the fittings to the adapters and then slid down that uh, black part and then I'll tighten that same way I did with the adapters hand tight and then move on to those adjustable pliers or crescent wrench. There. Once you're done with that, you're going to go back in and we're going to finally hook up these wires. Mine's 240 volts, so I had two hots coming in and then that ground that I had already put in earlier when I put the 90. And for this unit, it also has a switch up at the top uh, that lets you select between 115 and 230 volts. So just make sure that's at whatever voltage uh, your unit needs to run off of. And then once that's done, um, you're going to want to hook up your grounding wire. Mine was just this flimsy wire that was connected to the other unit for the actual main pull pump. And just tighten that in there. Then for the last step, we're going to put on the electrical housing cover. This just keeps it watertight and it makes sure that whenever you turn the breaker on, there's no chance uh, of you getting shocked. Then once you go turn your breaker back on, you're going to turn your main pool pump to get water circulating through. For me, it took a minute uh, for water to actually come through the main pump. But there we see the water is going through, so I'm going to let that run through for a minute. And then once I know the water is run through, I'll go ahead and turn on that booster pump. Okay, now that water is circulating for a minute, I'm going to go ahead and see if our booster pump turns on. And just like that, it's working like new. Um, 
hopefully this saves you guys the $150 or however much the local technician is going to charge you to replace that booster pump. It was really easy and definitely worth doing yourself. So thank you and have a good one.